I'm going to be reporting on a Schedule C, but I'm also reporting on a Schedule A, itemized deductions. The itemized deductions, as we saw before, or as we've talked about in a prior section or course, are, are, are items that are federal income taxes, but not natural kind of deductions that you would expect in a income tax system. In other words, what kind of deductions would you expect is natural to an income tax system? Those deductions in which you needed to expend the money to generate revenue because you would expect that you should apply the tax not on gross income, but on the net income. Otherwise, you would be taxing some businesses that don't have expenses uh, would, would differently than those that have, you know, expenses related to them, right? So that whatever you needed to spend in order to generate the revenue, that's a natural income tax deduction. And that's why the Schedule C actually makes sense, right? That's, nat that's an income statement that makes sense for taxes. But the Schedule A has all these personal deductions which have some other objective in mind, right? They're trying to nudge us or influence our behavior, or they've got lobbyists that got the deductions in there or something. So for example, charitable deductions, uh, the, the home deduction for mortgage interest and so on. These are deductions that are personal. And so you would think, why would, why would we be deducting those? Well, for some reason other than those are the expenses in order to generate the revenue. And those are usually on a cash-based system. So the fact that those are on a cash-based system doesn't mean that your income statement has to be on a cash-based system. You can have your income statement for the Schedule C possibly on an accrual-based system, if appropriate, while still reporting the other expenses on your Schedule A and on the Schedule 1 of the 1040, for example, on a cash-based system. All right, two or more businesses. If you have two or more separate and distinct businesses, you can use different accounting methods for each if the method clearly reflects the income of each business. Now, as we'll see shortly, some things might influence whether you can move, whether you have to use an accrual method. So for example, inventory often complicates things and makes it more likely that you might need an accrual system because accounting for inventory as an asset is basically an accrual type of thing that needs to be done uh, in, in that case. So you might have two businesses, let's say, for example, one business is a service business where you do gig work and you just get paid on the gig work. Well, that would be pretty easy to do on a cash-based system. The other business, possibly you sell inventory, in which case it might be more appropriate to be using an accrual-based system. So you can imagine then, you have business number one, which is on a cash-based system because it's gig work. Business number two on a separate Schedule C now, now has an accrual method because you deal with inventory. And then your personal deductions reported on the Schedule A, as well as possibly on the Schedule 1, also basically on a cash-based method because that's what those schedules typically do. So they are separate and distinct only if you maintain complete and separate books and records for each business. So in other words, the IRS is going to be skeptical if you have one set of books and then you're splitting them up into two Schedule Cs using two accounting methods in order to basically manipulate the income again. They would need to be, of course, two separate businesses where you're tracking two different set, sets of books and therefore justifiably reporting them on two different Schedule Cs and then picking the appropriate accounting method for each of those businesses.